Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Srini Raghavan, Vice President for Microsoft Teams Ecosystem. So in my role, I have the privilege of serving hundreds of millions of users across the globe and thousands of customers, partners, and developers every single day. I'm excited to be kicking off a new video series that showcases developers and independent software vendors and their journey with Microsoft and Microsoft Teams. So join me in exploring how they have innovated, delivered unique solutions, and also accelerated their market presence as they go about building their enterprises. One of these people I've had pleasure to work closely with is Bhavin Shah, founder and CEO of MoveWorks, a Microsoft partner. MoveWorks is a Gen AI platform that boosts employee productivity by surfacing information and automating tasks through natural language. Bhavin, I think you call it the AI platform that powers the best places to work, but I'm not gonna put your words in my mouth, uh, so I'm gonna let you explain a lot of that. And today we're gonna learn from Bhavin and MoveWorks and their journey and hear the story about their next gen bot that Bhavin and team have built and developed on top of Microsoft Teams. So thanks for being here, let's jump right in. First of all, Bhavin, I know we've worked together for a while now. I would love to start off at a very top level since I think many people, both in the audience and developer community would be curious to hear about your own story as a founder and entrepreneur, as well as if you could share the journey of what inspired you to create MoveWorks and its journey. Well, thank you, Srini. It's great to see you again. Uh, thank you for having me on this program. You know, the MoveWorks story actually began in 2016. And this was in the early, early days of, of AI relative to where we are today. And, you know, I was thinking a lot about different opportunities and use cases. And we were in this era of instant where transportation, food, everything was happening instantly. But the average support issue was taking three days to resolve. And we started to dig in and we realized that this was actually a language issue. So we deployed a lot of different machine learning techniques. Uh, these were, you know, uh, considered now classical models, not large language models by any stretch. Um, and this allowed us to understand this user interface of people sub right, submitting tickets uh, and then prosecuting those, taking action and resolving it. What we found was that this didn't need to be a one-off endeavor. In fact, what we discovered very quickly was that the same issues at an industrial company were showing up at a media company, were showing up at a uh, healthcare company. Because as employees, we have the same kinds of questions, a new device every year, a new piece of software, access to a folder, a question about um, you know, something with our reimbursement and, and benefits and so forth. And so we were able to start to then leverage this homogenization uh, in terms of building a platform that companies could use to resolve their issues. And so we started to then go across domains to really help employees at enterprises around the world uh, to get their work done. Now, this was all pre-chat GPT, and so people thought, wow, this is, this is pretty, pretty impressive. It wasn't built using you know, dialogue flows. It was actually quite sophisticated, um, still had its limits, and we'll talk more about how we've evolved the platform since then. But it really did uh, take away a lot of the mundane tasks that were overburdening IT support teams, enabling these organizations to be more efficient, but also to make their employees more, uh, more, more and more productive. Thanks for sharing that. In fact, what is interesting to me is when you and I were talking and collaborating with your company, um, it was before Chat GPT came along. And I remember this was even before the transformer architecture came along as we know it. But I'm also curious in terms of knowing along the way, is there anything that surprised you that you learned? Anything that you wish that you had known before? Yeah, look, I, I was very fortunate that the team here had really already started pioneering early work uh, with large language models, going back to the BERT model and Microsoft's Roberta and Deberta and many other 
techniques that then became very applicable um, when the world started to really say that large language models was going to be a new form of compute. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of people excited about AI, and I think there's a lot of new companies that are forming, and people have sort of built wrappers around, you know, some of these models uh, very quickly. And I guess my advice and one of the deep lessons of building an enduring company for hopefully many, many decades is that you actually have to invest in deep technology. Understanding you have to invest in deep technology uh, areas to differentiate your company, to ensure that your company has the durability, has the longevity that, you know, hopefully most entrepreneurs have uh, for their, uh, you know, respective companies. And so I think that, um, you know, thinking about what your idea is, is great. Understanding there are enabling technologies, that's great. But then what is that X factor that you're going to be adding to that? And hopefully that has some differentiation and some um, more difficult uh, tasks. Because if it's hard for you to do it, it's going to be hard for others, uh, but also ultimately deliver value to the customer. That's first and foremost, without any value, uh, it's just technology for technology's sake. So I think that in making those investments early are really important, which is, uh, you know, I think uh, goes to say that if you have access to capital, if you have access to resources, use it, leverage it. Um, don't rush too fast into the market uh, if you don't have something that differentiates. The second sort of, I guess, surprise or one of the things that I've learned along the way is I took too long to reach out to you all. In fact, I think you guys had reached out to us a few times and uh, we, we uh, were just quite busy at the time. And I think now that we've partnered up and now that we have uh, a deep uh, you know, relationship on a variety of fronts, you know, it really has accelerated our business. And I think that's what, um, if I go back and I'd started this over again, uh, we would have been right there with you at the start of the team's rollout, uh, rather than sort of waiting a little bit on the sidelines until, until you had that fully, um, you know, mobilized around the globe. Hey, uh, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. The one thing I would love to learn from your perspective, uh, Bhavan, on that note is, how did you, you talked about the partnership and reaching out to us earlier? How did anything about our partnership help advance MoveWorks's mission? What can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, as you as you mentioned at the, at the top of this um, conversation, right? We are on the Teams platform, and so Microsoft is a very key component of our user interface for. Uh, knowledge workers and employees around the world. We we depend on that. The innovations you're doing on the Teams platform, the capabilities, the UI features, uh, the um, all of that comes into sharp focus for us every single day. Obviously, now that you've done a lot as well on the uh, Azure side of of the world with OpenAI, Azure OpenAI services, and just Azure in general has has uh, come a long way. We leverage that. Um, in our production environment, we leverage that in our model training, we leverage that with model inference um, extensively. I think the other piece is uh, we, we're both very much aligned as we serve large enterprises in the area of security and innovation. I think that those are two values that we hold very dear. We've invested a lot. And I think that has really enabled customers, our mutual customers, to understand that we both have the same ethos, we both have the same commitment to ensuring how uh, that we are handling data correctly, that we're, these models are doing things correctly, that there's guardrails, uh, that there are the right controls to ensure that business processes, um, privacy, and IP is, is always protected. Um, and so that uh, obviously combined with the fact that now we're on your marketplace, uh, allows us really to accelerate growth even further. So, look, I think there's many more things as we think about even some of the more detailed collaborations that we have. But at the highest level, I think those come to mind as, as some of the key reasons why um, we continue to really uh, bet on this partnership and in, in, in amplifying our business. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Bobin. We aspire to be the best enterprise platform for ISVs and developers to build their apps and solutions and including building the next-gen AI apps. 
I know MoveWork started building this employee productivity solutions on Teams about five years ago, longer than a lot of people, uh, with a next generation bot uh, that uses Teams as a natural chat interface because it lends into the conversational uh, interface that Teams offers. Could you tell me from your perspective, uh, why did you choose to build a solution? Let's getting into a little bit on the tech side, right? To build a solution on Teams and specifically talk about what impact are you seeing with customers or mutual customers today? Yeah. Well, I think if you look at today, we are somewhere between 70, 70 and 80% of our customer base is leveraging Teams and using Teams to access our service. So Teams has become a very important platform for us uh, to support. Now, if you go back to what I described earlier in terms of the secular shifts with instant everything, mobility, um, and collaboration tools evolving in the enterprise, I think that we started to see Teams show up everywhere. And, and you obviously have great penetration inside the enterprise when it comes to M365. Um, and so our joint customers, companies like Honeywell, companies like Toyota North America, right? They have been leveraging uh, both the MoveWorks Copilot and the Microsoft Copilot together um, quite extensively. And I think that's uh, helped us both, um, you know, provide uh, different but impactful outcomes for those customers. Speaking on our side, um, looking at our customer base, people and, or organizations will see somewhere between 50 and 60% of all their support issues now get completely automated, which leaves them about half, right? That they then can continue to triage, continue to uh, process manually. But that's the entire universe of, of issues that come in. And over time, we keep adding more capabilities, more features that reduces the burden on agents who are generally typically overwhelmed already. As I mentioned before, it takes three and a half days to resolve a typical IT issue, four and a half for HR. So clearly we're not even at capacity in most organizations around the world. Um, and so that then leads to employees uh, being more productive, less friction, getting more out of their day. And we all know this, right? You, you, you get a lot of work done uh, on a given day, you go home, you feel pretty good about yourself. You know, but if, if you're stuck, um, you know, solving some things that really don't pertain to your job, well, you come home feeling frustrated. And so we did a Forrester uh, TEI report, uh, total economic impact report, and it showed 256% ROI in the first year for our customers and a combined $11 million savings over the subsequent three years. So real, real impact uh, from thinking about your employees as the opportunity to drive uh, change and to drive economic efficiencies for your business. Wow, 256% TEI, that's pretty huge. Um, thanks for sharing that. So I wanna get, uh, you know, get into the nuts and bolts of your co-pilot, right? MoveWorks, you call it co-pilot, uh, MoveWorks co-pilot. If you could break it down a little bit and also along the way, tell us, Maybe share something as to what is unique about it. What is unique about MoveWorks as co-pilot? And, and how is it a differentiator for customers? If you think about MoveWorks, we're a uh, company level or enterprise level co-pilot that interacts with all sorts of systems. Typically, in most of our customers' environments, we're talking to you know, uh, 20 to 50, sometimes even more systems that employees have to access, employees have to, you know, um, leverage uh, to do their work. Now, not always every day and not always on a frequent basis, but sometimes quite infrequently, you know, performance review, you know, time of year, or maybe there is uh, a certain uh, type of uh, process that has to be run at the end of each month, or, or maybe there is some information they have to search on a one-off basis because there's some incident or there's some issue that's, that's emerged. And so what our co-pilot is, is this place where they can go to and they can ask these questions and our job is to go find those answers. Now that is different than let's say the M365 Copilot, which is a very powerful employee productivity Copilot that allows your employees to be a lot more effective 
um, in the Microsoft suite and the ecosystem that you guys have built and continue to expand on. And so when you think about our world, we're doing both search and we're b- both doing actions as well that isn't assigned to one specific system. And so we're spanned across that. Uh, customers will tend to brand our, our co-pilot with a name and an icon because, again, it's part of their core company ethos as a service offering that CIOs and leaders uh, of that company get to decide what this co-pilot does and doesn't do. I think one of the key things that makes our product valuable to these enterprises is they get to decide, hey, what services are we going to provide? What kinds of questions will it answer? And what kinds of questions will it not answer? Uh, that is not always the case with consumer chat GPT type of products, right? As we all know, it'll, it'll be more uh, output oriented <laughs> rather than outcome oriented. We tie this back to what's the business goal? What are the automations and processes that, that matter? And, you know, I think that being able to do this um, allows us to also then span across different systems like M365 and like your co-pilot so that we become an entry point um, or an exit point depending on where the user begins their journey. That's pretty impressive, uh, Bhavin. The one aspect that I wanted to get a little bit more um, idea on is when MoveWorks built, when you built your own co-pilot, um, I believe you made a strategic move to start from scratch to do a clean slate redesign as opposed to bolting an existing Gen AI into existing systems. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your decision, your approach, and how that's played out today? Was it the right thing to do in hindsight, or is it the thing that's still playing out? Uh, please share some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And you know, I think that founders are always sp- uh, faced with uh, these moments uh, in their journey, sometimes very disruptive moments, maybe moments that provide huge opportunities. But it's really about, do you have that growth mindset to want to reinvent yourself? And look, we were growing quite, quite well uh, and quite significantly over the years preceding ChatGPT using uh, large language models from Microsoft, like Roberta and Deberta, uh, and many others to do, you know, essentially a basic um, type of uh, work of intent identification, entity extraction, essentially trying to then break down the question and then take certain actions against that. When we saw ChatGPT, we saw what OpenAI had done with uh, RLHF and other techniques to train these models to provide generative outputs. We said, huh, there's actually something quite interesting here. And you combine that with this uh, architecture, uh, which uh, there's you know several uh, different designs out there, but the React architecture that Google has talked about and others have now created to use large language models to do advanced reasoning, planning of steps, observing those steps, and then sort of learning from that, uh, sort of chain of thought reasoning around actions. And so when we saw this, we thought to ourselves, well, what can we do with this? Well, we could do a whole lot more complex queries. We could do recursive queries. We could do queries that were far more intense and comprehensive than our previous architecture had allowed for. And, you know, obviously posed different business constraints in the past. And so what we did was adopt that new architecture, uh, had to rebuild quite a bit. So we weren't just trying to jam in a Gen AI response. We were actually re-architecting this. Uh, the, The net result is you can ask very complex questions give it five different tasks to do it all at once, and it'll step through them. You can say, hey, could you give all of all members of my team access to this folder? And it'll start to go through and plan those steps. Okay, who are you? Who are your team members? Um, And go through that whole business logic. And so I think that, you know, we're excited by that investment. Now, it did take, you know, close to 10 months to do. um, And we leverage you know, models like GPT-4.5 Turbo uh, through Azure OpenAI services to do this. We have our own models uh, that we've trained some of these capabilities. And so um, I think that, you know, what we're also evolving this to do is to do more co-pilot to co-pilot handoffs, which we'll be talking more about in the future. Um, But that is really kind of the basis for 
I think why these new LLMs can actually be much more effective at delivering, you know, the kinds of answers and handling the kinds of questions that employees are, are, are posing uh, to it. All right, Bobin, thank you. That is very interesting. Uh, could you share a little bit about how is this all landing with customers? What type of feedback are you hearing? And also, it would be great to be able to get an idea of um, the conference that you had, uh, MoWorks Art Global, uh, what kind of responses that you would receive. You don't have to share it now, but you can do it at a future point in time. Would love to get uh, your thoughts around what do you what did you share? Well, in rolling out this new co-pilot, uh, which we call Next Gen Co-pilot for our customers, obviously for new customers, it's it's what we offer. It's really been compelling and very um, convincing for them to see how what MoveWorks was traditionally known as in terms of support and providing these sort of canonical use cases has now become something that they're pushing us and pulling us into all sorts of areas. So if you think about the more that you can engage these employees, the more that they come back each and every week to find something, to ask a question, to get help, and they're getting the help. What we're seeing is that customers want to build on top of our platform and they want to be able to extend it. Oh, we've got this proprietary system. We want to be able to look up inventory. We want to be able to you know, pull this other bit of information. We want to be able to schedule a direct meeting through this conversation. Um, and so that has really been a lot of the opportunity as we go from sort of, you know, few department sort of type of use cases to business wide. And, you know, I think extending our co-pilot has really become central. And when you talk about our, our global conference, um, you know, a short while ago, that really allowed us to highlight for customers really all the possibilities across legal, finance, facilities, uh, to general employee search, to document retrieval and, and, and the likes that people can tie in to everything from Microsoft solutions like SharePoint to non-Microsoft uh, you know, types of repositories and softwares. What we're seeing is as days go by, more employees engage, more employees uh, create uh, asks and have new ideas. And so I think what you're going to see is conversational interfaces like this uh, are really going to become a new way that people expect to interface with their companies, to interface with their businesses. Um, and people will look for systems like this to know how to do it and to go and get them to the right expert if, if, if it's not possible. That's pretty cool. When I talk to customers, and I talk to customers quite often are enterprise customers, right? There's a couple of key things that resonate with them as it relates to any of these Gen AI tools or co-pilots, okay? One is they really love the opportunity that it affords in terms of, hey, driving business growth, number one. Uh, you know, enhancing employee productivity as number two. Number three, in terms of driving operational efficiencies in their business ops, right? How are you measuring or your customers are measuring impact uh, from a MoveWorks co-pilot using Teams, right? What do you tell them? Like when you present a business case, right? What are the key metrics that you track or you measure using uh, for any of the impact that you have? Well, customers are absolutely... Uh, of the mind today that they need to make their businesses more efficient. And efficiency comes in the form of agents being more efficient to be able to deliver more services um, at a greater speed to the employee base, to also grow uh, the employee base without incurring a linear amount of cost to support them. So, you know, providing services that actually scale has been one thing that comes up almost in every conversation in every deal. Now you talk about employee productivity, and I think that given uh, the world's now awareness of ChatGPT, uh, that has changed how people think about uh, the place that Gen AI can really play in this in this new world that we're all in. And so there is a component that employ uh, that customers look for in terms of employee productivity. Um, we look at um, time to resolution. We look at number of questions. We look at the kinds of engagement that they would want to see 
to ensure that we're resolving the issues that are that are coming in. So adoption is key. Um, the use cases are actually sometimes quantified, Srini. So they'll actually look at, hey, this is worth X dollars uh, each time it comes in. Um, we have a customer who just made some uh, you know, uh, connections within our system to some of their mainframes and other things that would normally take you know, a few hours to get certain bits of information. And because now it's instantaneous, you know, they're actually saying this helps them save on the order of seven figures a year across all their employees in delayed time that was then wasted, that was, that, that was otherwise causing their factories uh, to go unused while those questions were being answered, while that was being looked up um, is now happening instantly. So if you think about that, uh, people will start to quantify that. Um, and then, you know, I think overall, uh, as I talked about before, solving half of your issues, solving th- three quarters of your issues really does reduce the the burden on IT, on HR, on facilities, on finance, on all these other departments um, that is making engineers more efficient, that's making, you know, uh, marketers more efficient, that's making every member of the team uh, more effective at what they do. And so CEOs are now tracking this with us. Uh, you know, they've made claims to the board. We've seen ourselves put in annual reports as one of the key initiatives that drive efficiency for the business. Uh, so going back to the Forrester TEI report, there's a lot of data that our customers track that we track with them. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, people often uh, find it very exciting to go rush out and build a new product and to launch it as an entrepreneur. But what customers really look for and what they need, at least at the enterprise scale, is they need analytics. They need data. And so we actually used, before ChatGPT, we were like, hey, what else can these large language models be good for? We created an extensive suite of analytics, which we call Employee Experience Insights, that allows our customers to tell and understand the quality of service that they're getting not based on how human agents have labeled this, but based on how large language models have interpreted all of their tickets, all of the interactions, both through the co-pilot and not with the co-pilot. And the net result is they can now see with great clarity, hey, this is what slowed down our sales team at the end of the fiscal year that took us long to provide, or this was the fastest thing we were able to do for our engineers. And so you combine that kind of tool set with a powerful tool like that, you know, like what we provide with the Copilot, and it's almost an infinite experience of, ooh, look at what we've changed here. Look at the opportunity here. Look at the gap that if we go and automate this service, we can have the Copilot trigger and fully complete end to end. So lots of lots of information there, but hopefully it gives you a sense that you both have to innovate on creating these new experiences, but you also have to provide the analytics to back it up. Yeah. Hey, Bobin, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your thoughts. Um, so one parting comment and question. One is thank you again for your investment in Microsoft and Microsoft Teams. We never take it for granted. And if there is anything that we can do to do better, uh, we learn every day. Uh, and please do let us know. I know there's a lot of folks who may be watching this and would love to tap into your unique perspective as well and your company's growth. And I've seen your company grow uh, year after year, which is pretty awesome to see. Uh, For anyone who's trying to get into the space and also working with Microsoft and partnering with us on Microsoft Teams, what advice would you offer to them? Like, how can they leverage the AI space itself, right, to enhance their offering and to stay competitive or to actually use the model that we have with Microsoft Teams as a conversational interface to do a, to do and add more value for customers. Well, thank you, Srini, for, for, for giving us this opportunity, you know, to speak today, but also in terms of the partnership, um, you know, I think we've been, we've been really grateful for uh, the advice Um, for the collaboration. You guys have, as you said, you've seen us grow. You've seen the data. You have the data. You know uh, what co-pilots and bots are actually performing. Um, You also know how we're leveraging uh, Azure and OpenAI and and, and all those services there. So 
uh, the good news is, is there's no secrets and you can really uh, help us uh, think about all of the opportunities and the, and the challenges. When it comes to uh, any new endeavor, and I have the opportunity to speak to lots of entrepreneurs, get you know, asked to, to present, is that right now, everyone with a checkbook in the world of business has the authority to go and investigate and to purchase products around AI, that service AI, that deliver AI, that optimize AI. And so this is the era that we're in. And you have to think about when you're building a company that the timing of what you build as it relates to the macro trends is very important. In fact, of all the things that lead to company success, and you know, uh, sometimes I, I, I'm in denial of them because when the, you look at the list, it's not the founder, it's not the technology, it's actually market timing. And it has to do with, does your idea align with the timing of the world? As the saying goes, if you build something that the world wants, the world has no other choice but to support you and to and to reward you. And so when it comes to that, you know, if you're not building an AI first product right now, I would think about that. I would think about what it would take to really invest, to pull the right team together, uh, because that's what the world's looking for. That's what they're shopping for. And for the next, I don't know how many, five, 10 plus years, a lot of the growth that we're going to see in technology will be based on this new wave. And this wave will eclipse many other waves that we've seen before. And so partner with strong technologists. There's a lot of people um, now uh, working to get uh, you know, an edge in this space. Uh, there's a lot of capabilities, a lot of things you can invent and try. Um, and if you do that, I think you'll find a lot of opportunity and a lot of success. And if you don't, someone's going to eat your lunch because... The uh, share of wallet today is being spent in AI. And I think that share of wallet is what your job is to go capture. Got it. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, I uh, appreciate it. By the way, I think you've been too mo being too modest uh, when you say it's all about market timing. Um, I know for a fact an A team can take a B product to places, but you can never have a B team with an A product and make it successful. So thanks again. I know you, Weibo, and Varun, and Jiang and the team um, have worked really hard. All the best to you. Uh, thank you, Bobin. Talk to you next time and looking forward to uh, continued uh, partnership.